Hi everyone and welcome back to the Leisure Tech channel. I'm here today with Chris from Yamaha to talk through the newly launched MGX mixers. So Chris, give us the lowdown. Uh, what is the new series? Well, firstly, thanks for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'd like to introduce the brand new range of MGX mixers from Yamaha. They're a series of compact digital mixing consoles that deliver professional grade sound uh, with effortless control. They're designed for anybody and everybody from rehearsal studios to uh, sound engineers, content creators, podcasters. So anybody that's looking for great Yamaha sound with effortless control, MGX is the mixer for you. So we're all fluent with using a mixer in some capacity, whether it's analog or digital, uh, from the MG series to the newer digital DM series. Where do the new MGX mixers sit? Um, are, are these the only two in the range or is there others? That's a great question, Glenn. So the MGX series is a series of four different mixers. So we've got the MGX 16 and the MGX 12. Yeah. And then we've got the MGX 16V and the MGX 12V. Okay. The difference being one of them will handle video, the other one doesn't. Um, we've got the two black models here today as well, but there's also two uh, uh, white versions as well. So all four models are available in black or white. So who are these aimed at? So MGX mixers are aimed at producers, mm -hmm. podcasters, content creators, engineers. Um, they can be used in a wide range of applications as well. So um, rehearsal studios, great mixers for mm -hmm. rehearsal studios, education, houses of worship, um, rental companies, mm -hmm. corporate rental, um, you know, they're they're a great all-rounder, whatever you need to do, MGX will get it done for you. So pretty much any market is gonna fit into that sort of sector. Okay, so just to mention, we're looking at both a mixer and an audio interface. Exactly, you get tactile, hands-on mixing with integrated DSP power and interface performance you'd expect from our UR series or the DM3 mixers. Uh, so whatever you're doing, whether you're tracking, streaming, or running a live event, MGX Series gives you flexibility without extra boxes or a steep learning curve. It looks like an analog mixer, um, but you mentioned it's got digital features. So talk me through that a little bit. Yeah, that's, um, that's a great observation. Um, and that is one of the strengths of the MGX Series. It has been designed to look and feel very much like analog. So for anybody that's uh, learnt their way through mixing on an analog mixing console, or they're brand new to it, mm. they won't be intimidated by some of the steep learning curves that you might get with a traditional digital mixer. Sure. Um, however, there's a lot of power under the hood of this machine. Mm. So first and foremost, you've got your faders. Mm -hmm. There's no hidden layers. So what you see is what you get. With the MGX16, you've got 16 faders. With the MGX12, you've got 12 faders. Um, but we employ our selected channel feature, which from using digital mixers from Yamaha, you'll be well averse with this. Um, essentially, I select the channel and then the controls on the screen now relate to that specific channel. Okay. So um, we can see here, we've got four channels visible at one time. If I click on channel number one, now all of the controls shown on the screen relate to channel number one. Mm -hmm. And this is where it becomes very different to an analog console because now we can see that we've got a noise gate, we've got a compressor, we've got a four band parametric EQ. And if I press on the EQ, it expands the screen and now I've got control over this EQ. Um, we can use the touch and turn knob as well to control the parameters. Brilliant, that's unique, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so it's um it's it's a really nice balance of both. You've got you've got all the power of a digital console, but you've got the simplicity and the uh, welcoming interface mm. of an analog console. I can see on the back here as well. You've got a micro SD on both, and also you've got the HDMI on the V model. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is a this is a new introduction for a Yamaha console. So for mm. the first time, we've actually got. Um, standalone recording via a micro SD card. Okay. Uh, on the MGX 16 and 16V, you can record up to 16 channels. On the 12, you can record up to 12 channels. 
um, which makes it absolutely perfect for your rehearsal studios where the band go along. They don't want to take the laptop, they just want to get in, start playing around, uh, record the whole session. You can record it all as individual tracks, take that back to your home studio and produce it into a, a, a further developed song. Mm. Um, or if it's for a school production or something like that, where maybe there's not enough time to do everything on the computer in the classroom, but this, the teacher, for example, could record the session, they could then share the files with the students and they can take that home and work on it on their PCs at home. Um, so it's a really good thing. And then when it comes to the HDMI, this is very exciting because what it means now is that we can connect a video mixer or a video yeah. camera directly into the back of the mixer um, we can use the audio coming from that video camera mm. or we can extract the audio. Mm. So for example, we might be wanting to record a band um, and do a live stream. Um, so you might have a, a simple video mixer that allows you to have multiple camera angles, but it's very limited with the audio. Mm. So with the MGX, you could have the whole band mic'd up, um, plugged into the mixer. You can set the mixer levels of the audio directly from this and then blend that with the video stream and send it out over the USB, send it to your, your laptop, maybe you're running something like OBS and you can stream that out to the wider world. Uh, we've also got a HDMI through, which and allows you, yeah. yeah, this allows you to monitor the video input um, and adjust the delay if you need to adjust the delay. Mm. Um, so you can see what's, what's going on with the video um, and what's going on with the output of the video. That's a brilliant feature. It's, um, it is a popular demand that I see quite a bit and um, it's great to see a mixer actually have this feature. Coming from a live production background, I notice you've got four headphone outputs there. Can you talk a little bit more about them? Because they seem unique again. I've never seen that before. Yeah, this is a, this is a really nice feature of the MGX. Um, Obviously for podcasting, radio shows, it's great to have some onboard headphone outputs. Mm. Um, you know, digital mixers can more than handle multiple headphone mixes, but you have to get involved in like the routing and setting them up and maybe having a headphone amplifiers. Which is separate um, again. Yeah, that's all on the one. MGX, it's all built in. So mm. you literally plug in your headphones. Yep. Um, on the screen, we've got this little um, soft key, yep. which if I click on this, it now allows me to adjust the volume of the four different headphone mixes directly from the front panel. I see. So it's very quick and easy to access. Um, that's looking at it from a production perspective, but you can also think about it from the live perspective as well. Mm. Um, a lot more people are wearing in-ear monitors now. And whilst the MGX is fully equipped for mono output, so on the MGX 16, you've got eight physical omni outputs. Yeah. So you could assign these to your stage monitors. However, using the stereo headphone outputs, these could be assigned to in-ear monitors. Mm. So it's, it's really well equipped for outputs, uh, probably punching above its weight in that perspective. Mm. I noticed here on the faders, you've got a pad, effects one, effects two. Can you talk a little bit about the effects that are incorporated within the mixer? Um, and then maybe move on to the user-defined keys here, which is unique as well. Yeah, no problem. So as with Many digital mixers, especially from Yamaha, you have a, a bank of effects. Mm -hmm. uh, the MGX gives you two global effects processors. So this means that you have a send and return system, um, typically for your reverbs and chorus type effects. Uh, these are your master outputs. So if you set them to zero, um, that will be the output from the effects processor. You can then patch the effects into the stereo mix, mm -hmm. which is typically how it's done. And then it's a case of, well, how do I send the effect from my input number one, which mm. might be my vocal. How do I get that into the effects processor? It's been designed very simply for the MGX. So over here, we've got our user-defined keys. Yeah. There's eight keys, but there's four banks. Okay. Uh, we're currently in bank number two, which is set to our effects pads, which I'll come on to in a minute. Mm -hmm. If I go back to effects number one, or bank number one, mm -hmm. this is where our rotary encoders can now be used as sends to either our omni outputs, so our mix outputs, or our effects outputs. Right. So I know okay. from a little bit of use that button seven and button eight relate to effect send number one, and button eight is effect send number two. So I can simply 
select button number seven, mm -hmm. go over to my channel number one where I've got my vocal mic plugged in, and I can now send the vocal through the reverb. The reverb's going to the stereo mix, so we now hear reverb on our vocal. And it's that sure. simple. Um, going back to talking about the pads, mm. so this is really useful for people doing uh, podcasting, radio shows, pub quizzes, where you want some sound effects. So you can um, you can use the default sound effects or you can load your own sound effects in. And you can just trigger them simply from these eight buttons. Um, and you have your output level of the pads as a dedicated fader on the mixer interface. Mm, okay. Um, and then the rest of the user-defined keys, um, there are, they are set up as default when you buy the mixer, but you can also assign them to different tasks as well. So oh, if we go good. into the settings page, um, we have a user defines keys button here, where you can see you've got your four banks, you can see you've got your eight keys under each bank, um, and then you can go in there and you can actually assign them. So you see bank number, uh, bank D is unassigned at the minute. If we were using it for theatre, for example, uh, because it's a digital mixer, we also have scenes um, as part of the mixer, which means that we can set the mixer up with certain snapshots. Right. And okay. every time you change scene, the mixer changes without actually, you know, changing in front of you. Mm. Um, having quick access to that when you're running a theatre show is is golden. Mm. So we can use the assignable keys, for example, to have scene plus one, scene plus one. So you can just keep pressing this button and it will move the mix on to the next scene that's been set up in the production rehearsal. Something else worth mentioning is that the MGX offers a couple of templates. So if you're an inexperienced user or you've got a very specific application you want to use a mixer for, we've actually installed some helpful um, setup features. Okay. So if we go over to the settings cog, in the top left corner, you can see that it says operation mode. It's currently set to standard. If we click on this, it gives us two options. We can use the simple mode or we can go to the standard mode. Up until now, we've been using the standard mode, but let's have a look at the simple mode and see what's on option here. So um, you can see that we've got three options available now. We've got the presets, which is where you would go in and you'd have some very standard presets. Yep. So recording, streaming, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but the setup assistance allows you to go back a step and actually get the mixer to help you set things up correctly and then you can store it as a preset. Okay. So if, for example, you wanted to do a live stream and you've got two vocal microphones and a guitar and a keyboard, you can actually use the aid of the mixer to help you set that up. So let's have a look at how that works. So if we go to the setup assistant, click next, um, it's gonna tell me that the mixer settings are gonna be changed, that's absolutely fine. Um, I'm now gonna click on the streaming option, which is the one in the middle, and click next. Uh, that's now loading the preset. What it's also going to do now is tell me how to set the mixer up mm. and then guide me through it. So it's asking me to remove all the faders back down to uh, zero. So this is quite new, right? I've never seen user prompts like this before. I can see it's been quite helpful for sort of um, more novice users or first time users or people new. To yeah, the ab absolutely. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's really cool. Um, so go to next, it's now telling me to connect it to my PC. So the MGX is a digital mixer, but it's also a USB audio interface, um, allowing you to record multiple streams of audio directly to your computer. Um, we bundle it with Cubase, but you can use it with your preferred DAW as well, and it becomes a fully fledged audio interface mm. um, with great mic preamps and DACs, ACDs. So setting up, I set my fader, my master fader to zero as it's telling me on the screen. I now connect my headphones to input number one and it's guiding me through how to control the volume of the headphones on the screen by pressing this button down here, mm -hmm. um, which we looked at earlier. Um, press the user to find button on the lower right. So this allows me to adjust the volume of the headphones as well. Um, you can see oh, here. Yeah, I can see that Click picture. Number yeah. two, and now I can adjust the volume of this. Um, and now it's saying connect a microphone to input number one. So we'll plug mm. the microphone in here. Yeah, sure. Click on next. What type of microphone have we connected? So we're going to connect a dynamic microphone. 
click on next, it's asking me, are we gonna sing or are we gonna talk through the microphone? Mm -hmm. On this occasion, we're gonna speak because we're presenting. Are we not singing? Not gonna sing today. Ah, okay. It's okay, Glenn. Let's speak, okay. Um, bass, tenor, alto or soprano. Um, I'm gonna edge more towards bass today. Mm -hmm. um, and now, if we had our microphone plugged in, mm -hmm. we click on auto and it will set the gain as we talk into the microphone perfectly for the volume that we're talking at. Very clever. Um, of course, anybody who's experienced with musicians or people recording will mm. know that when you're asked to do a sound check, you will speak a lot quieter or you'll sing quieter. And then mm. when the performance starts, you get into it and you start clipping the signal. It changes. The, the MGX actually has a clip safe feature. So if you do start going into the red of the signal, it will, it will limit it at that point, but it will also reduce the gain and find the sweet spot for the gain from that point onwards. As we move through this process, it now asks me to move up the um, the channel fader. So yep. I will now be able to hear my vocal in the headphones. Um, and what it will now do is ask me, do I want to add some reverb to it? Um, and what sort of sound will do I want to get from my vocal microphone? Um, this is effectively utilizing the four band parametric EQ in the background, yeah. but it's doing it in a way that's very user friendly. So it's using descriptive words like bright or mellow or deep or punchy, uh, words that people relate to when they might not know what 150 hertz will do to a, a, sure. a, a microphone signal. And it's quicker, right? I mean, from a programming point of view, um, it's a lot easier to press a button it's and easier. know what that effect yeah. is going to create. It, it's easier. I think when you know how to use an EQ, it's not quicker. Mm. Uh, but the nice thing with this is that once you've set it up once, True. it allows you to store it as a preset. So then in the future, it is a lot quicker. Yeah. So it's about finding that workflow and improving that workflow, and making sure that you've got a great foundation on which to build your, your performance or your program, whatever you're doing. With Yamaha's reputation for audio quality, where does the MGX series fit into all of this? Um, I know we mentioned before talking a little bit about the preamps. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So MGX sits right at the top of its class. So it features a brand new microphone preamp called the MGX Premium Mic Preamp. Mm -hmm. um, we've worked really hard on the DACs and the ADCs and making sure that the, the analog signal coming into the desk gets converted in a really beautiful, transparent and audio friendly way. Mm. Um, and on the same on the outside as well. So when the signal is being converted from the uh, digital world back out into the analog world, it's, it's done at a very high level. So whether you're recording a podcast, doing a live stream, doing a, a production at a house of worship or a, a school performance, uh, MGX is a premium product that's very robust. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's great for all sorts of applications. Um, it's a product you can trust with your audio to serve you well. Let's summarize. So what's the real appeal for the MGX compared to the other models in the range? MGX is a professional yet effortless mixer. You get the true Yamaha sound and an interface that adapts to the operator. And of course you get the reliability you need. So whether it's from your first take to your live stream to a live production, MGX will get the job done. Great, well thanks Chris for coming in and giving us a first look at the new MGX series. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about the MGX, speak to our team today or check out the information links below. Thanks for watching.